Welcome back to Runiverse. I'm Andrew, and in this video, we're playing round four, the last quarterfinals of my Soul Forge Fusion tournament with my Kickstarter decks. If this is the first one you've seen, that's fine. Although, if you haven't played Soul Forge Fusion before, you don't know how it works, you might want to check out one of my first couple because today we'll be playing quickly. I hope I like to explain everything that happens, but I might not explain why it happens. So, if you need that again, check out the links in the description. Watch episode one of the series. We need to choose our final deck pairing so they're both going to be alloyant so i'm going to start with evens or odds and we got odds so that means steel rosetta will be on this side evens or odds for cersei versus korok evens means cersei so these are our two deck pairings take a look first here at steel rosetta so she has inspire on cycle two repurpose on three and enhance on four and here's the deck list if you want to take a look at that then we have Cersei with Life Drain, Soul Siphon, and Army Commander, and her deck list. On the other side, we have Iron Beard. He's got a Knockback, Reinforce, and Shields Up, the Debating Defenders. And then Korok with Lightning Speed, Whirlwind, and Demolish, the Courtesans of the Crazy Cape. So I do really like the Scum of Scattering Cersei, but I've decided to go with Steel Rosetta. And the other side, we're going with the Courtesans of the Crazy Cape Korok, see if his aggressive strategy can work out. I'm gonna kick it off with an Energy Surge for an extra upgrade, so we get a Gizmo minion. Gizmo is a token creature outside the game. 2-2, two, two. when a creature replaces this, give it plus two, plus two. We'll put it in the front here. We also get to upgrade a card in our hand. I think we'll do the Necrotic Fiend. So Necrotic Fiend level two and Energy Surge level two go to our discard pile. Energy Surge goes to Banish. And it's Korok's turn. Even though we want to play aggressively, we're starting off on the defensive side. Let's lead off with this Thundersaur. It has Breakthrough, which won't matter now. Maybe its attack can get buffed up by the damage it takes from this Gizmo or whatever it upgrades into. And I wanted to upgrade the Gizmo into Recycling Sentry, but if I do, it'll be a 6-5 with one armor. It'll put Thundersaur down to 6 health, but up to 6 attack, meaning on the second turn, with nothing else coming into play, they will trade in the second turn, which isn't really what I'm looking for. So instead, I'm going to play Scourge Hydra as a more aggressive creature and also to level that up, even though we we're not going to be able to use the deploy ability and just put it right there. And for Korok, he's happy to play this Bright Steel Sentinel. It'll give itself three armor and it will happily eat that Scourge Hydra. So all the lanes resolve simultaneously, but we'll do them one at a time since I'm a human. So zero is dealt to the Gizmo. Gizmo deals two to Thunderstorm, bringing it down to 10 health. And because of its ability, it goes up to two attack. Bright Steel Sentinel will deal five and kill the Hydra. Five comes back, it's blocked by three armor. So two puts the Bright Steel Sentinel down to two. And we move on to round two or turn two so both players will discard the remaining contents of their hands and draw a new five cards the cards that got played are now leveled up so that when we move on to cycle two they will have more powerful options these also slide forward and i think we can deny our opponent an upgrade by playing stone skin we're going to give the thunder soar five attack which is nice because of the breakthrough will also battle the gizmo meaning it's going to take two more damage and gain two more attack so that's plus seven putting it up to nine and now player one cannot upgrade that gizmo also the forge should have switched so player one will now be playing to the back row i think they're going to play stabilizing sculptor a one five if it replaced a creature we get to play a level one spell for free unfortunately that is not the case but we do get to return a creature to its printed attack and health so we're just going to take all the dice off the Thunder Soar, puts it back to 12 health, but now we can just ignore it if we want to and let it sit there with zero attack. But Korok still has five attack, plus we're going to play eight more attack here. The taunting, taunting Justicar can pull the Sculptor over to it, but we actually don't want to do that. We want to just put it right up in the front and threaten eight more damage. And the best deal Rosetta can do is block that with a Gloom Reaper Hag when she dies. We'll deal three and gain three, so we'll put her here, level her up. And seven will be dealt to five to kill it. Eight will be dealt to five to kill it. So both of these die. That triggers the hag, which will resolve in a second. Still Rosetta is going to take five, but then gaining three from the hag means go down to 48. The Thunder Sword doesn't deal damage because it has zero attack, and the Sculptor doesn't deal any damage because she's in the back. Korok goes down to 47. 
Switch back to Forge, slide forward the Sculptor, and discard our hands for turn three. And I think we'd like to start off this turn by playing Dark Heart Sorcerer as Defender, but that's okay because we're going to put it in front of this Sentinel here, and if in the future, if we play a spell, we can deal two to our opponent and gain two more health, stalling them a bit. And Korok is going to play Drix, which can activate to play a Gizmo. We'll put that in front of the Sculptor and let these one power creatures fight it out for a few turns. Meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and make a Sculptor a Gizmo here. This doesn't feel great, but Drix is very dangerous, and if we don't kill it this turn, they're going to be able to make another Gizmo guaranteed, if not more in future turns. So I'm going to somewhat reluctantly play Grave Pact. I've destroyed my own creature, which is going to be this Sculptor, in order to give the Drix minus 8, minus 8. We do get our Dark Heart Sorcerer trigger, so we go back up to 50, and they go down to 45. Now we're going to be ending this turn with a very small board. And Korok's going to go ahead and use that gizmo that they made to upgrade it into a Thunder Stomper, which can activate to deal 2 damage to another one of their creatures, give itself plus 2 attack, and they're going to do that, activating it to deal 2 damage to Thunder Soar, meaning it goes up to attack as well. So it's a 210, and the Thunder Stomper is going to be activated an 8-9. That should be in the back, though, which is good for Steel Rosetta, so she's only going to take 2 this turn. Back down to 48. Sorcerer will kill the Sentinel, and the Sentinel puts the Sorcerer down to 3. And we move on to Cycle 2, which means not only do the players discard their hands, but they discard the last 5 cards of the deck, which don't get drawn. And now the Cycle 2 abilities on the Forgeborn will be available. And the Dark Heart Sorcerer stays in the back because it has Defender. We'll go ahead and activate the Thunder Stomper right off the bat, deal 2 more damage here, putting it down to 8 and up to 4 attack. This also goes up, this one to 10 attack, and we may as well just double down on that strategy with this level 2 Thunder Stomper, which can also activate, hit that Thunder Soar. We'll sp spread out our troops, 2 more damage to Thunder Soar, puts it up to 6, and this level 2 Thunder Stomper gets 4 up to 8 Let's go ahead and block both of those big guys with Armored Inventor and her pet Gizmo that she gets for deploying. Doesn't really matter where we put her, even though she's got two armors, likely to die to the dinosaur. And I think I would be very tempted to play this card. So it looks really bad, but its upgrades are actually pretty good and we're pretty well ahead right now. But because I think we should be playing an aggressive deck, I'm not going to play the card that is weak now but strong later. I'm going to try to win as quickly as possible. So I could just play this 5-5. Its ability won't really help us right now. So we don't want to shrink any of our creatures or buff up the Sorcerer. Or we can just deal 3 damage and take away this Gizmo or the Sorcerer. And the Gizmo is actually currently blocking. Because the Sorcerer could be more annoying over time. Or we could play that 5-5 into this lane to kill the Sorcerer. And survive to fight another day. But we won't really be doing damage this turn. We will be crushing everything they have, so maybe that makes the most sense. Which is a bummer for Steel Rosetta, because it's just like a little bit off from anything she would have liked to happen. But I think we're going to be okay. So we're going to use Steel Rosetta's Cycle 2 ability, Inspire. It says it has the Cycle 2 ability of your unused Forgeborn, so we are going to tap into the Cersei here with her Life Drain, deal 4 damage to a creature, and gain 4 health. We're going to hit our own Inventor for 4. So two of that will get soaked by her armor, the other two will kill her, and we gain four health, going up to 52. And now we're going to play our card for the turn, which is this Scourge Hydra, which we've conveniently leveled up. Because one of our creatures was destroyed this turn, we can destroy an enemy level one or two creature. I think we're going to put that here to fight the Thunder Soar, and it will just take out this Thunder Stomper over here. We're not done yet. Because we gained health this turn, we can play Zrath's Will for free, based on that last sentence there. And we get a Mindless Zombie Minion. So that's going to be this 3-3 guy that we can throw anywhere we want. And because we played a spell, we'll trigger the Sorcerer going up to 54 and putting them down to 43. And then we can fight. So our Sorcerer is going to die, unfortunately, and put the Tactician down to 3. The Scourge Hydra will trade with Thundersaur, although Breakthrough will deal 6 minus 4, 2, DAC to us, 
putting us back down to 52. And then the gizmo will get absorbed by that other thunder stomper, which goes down to 8. And of course, that ability is used now for the rest of the cycle. And we go on to turn 2 of cycle 3. Korok still has the board advantage, but the health is favoring Steel Rosetta. I think they'll start with a Gloom Reaper Hag, 8-6. If she dies, she deals 3. And we gain 3, and we'll put that in front of the Thunder Stomper to trade. But we will play the Taunting Justicar level 2 and steal that Hag. And we're going to put her... Actually, she just goes in the back, but we'll move over to here. This is hitting a little bit harder, although it is in the back row. This can potentially be plus four from its own ability, which we won't use yet, but we intend to, most likely. We also have the lightning speed in our pocket, which will give our creatures aggressive and plus two attack, letting them move forward if we want to. Unfortunately, this is not really optimal, but I think we're going to play Stabilizing Sculptor. We're not going to replace anything. We can't afford to lose a creature. I mean, we could play it in front of this instead of this zombie, but then we're not blocking anything anyway, except for whatever they potentially play. But on top of that, we don't really have any spells worth using because we have this grave pact where we'd have to not only replace a creature, but then destroy one of our own creatures. So instead, I guess we'll just return a creature to its printed attack and health. It's not thrilling, but five isn't going to kill the eight health anyway. So we'll knock it down to four attack, and now they're forced to activate it if they want to be able to kill the sculptor. Although that's not too steep of a cost. This is a little bit weird. I think it's worth doing a bunch of damage. I hope we're going to play Steadfast Mystic over here. And when we deploy it, we're going to get plus three to Taunting Justicar. It gains three attack and mobility one. Which puts it up to 12 attack. And then we can activate it using mobility to move here. Letting that hag hit us. We're also going to... Oh, it should be in the back. Except for that we are going to use that lightning speed that I mentioned to give our creatures plus two attack and aggressive, so they do go forward. And we get six, 14, seven, and three, which will be just enough to kill that zombie. We'll go ahead and use the Thunder Stomper as well for good measure. I guess we'll let the Tactician go down to one. It's not a big difference between one and three, is there? So this will go to 10, which is big enough to kill the Sculptor, which it will do now, putting itself down to five. These two will trade. Gloom Reaper Hag will deal 8. We go down to 35. But these two together will deal 21, 14, and 7. Putting Steel Rosetta down to 31. Giving Korak finally the lead. And he's going to get to start off the next turn with the first action. The last turn of cycle 2. And we'll just go ahead and put down this Drix level 2. And activate it to play a Gizmo in front of the Hag. And if we replace that Gizmo, not only do we get plus two, but we get an extra plus two from Drix's power. And we do not have the creatures to trade with that. I think we'll just play this spider. The Hematophagic Creeper says they have to take five or destroy one of their own creatures. I think they're just happy to take five at this point. And we can destroy one of our own creatures for three health, but we're not doing that. And this can trade with the Tactician, so we'll put it there. And for Korok, I think that 5 health was worth the plus 4 they're going to get for playing a creature there. Because even if it trades with the Hag still, it'll deal some breakthrough damage with this Stampeding War Stoker. So I did need to activate the Drix. Should be exhausted here, but we're going to replace the Gizmo and give plus 4, plus 4 on the War Stoker. Making it a 12-7, threatening tons of damage. And I've already switched sides, but I think it does make sense for them to use... The Thunder Stomper deal 2 damage to the War Stoker since it will be trading with the Hag anyway. And go ahead and give plus 4 to the Stomper just in case it matters. But I don't think it will because we are going to block it with this Arrogant Operator. has just enough attack to trade with the Thunder Stomper. So no harm done either way. That is not going to be great for Seal Rosetta. So these all trade. Although that's 6 breakthrough damage going us down to 25, 23, and 9. That is a lot of damage. Now the Gloom Reaper Hag puts us back up to 12 at least and puts them down to 27. And the Scientist gives us a Gizmo in the back, but it then slides forward as we change over to Cycle 3. 
That means the Forgeborn Cycle 3 abilities are available. So Steel Rosetta has Repurpose and Korok has Whirlwind. And I think I have to use it right off the bat in kind of a weird way. So we're going to do Repurpose. If we have a creature replace this turn, we may reanimate it. So we're going to go ahead and use that on this Gizmo, which we will then replace with the Stabilizing Sculptor level 3. So she becomes an 11-14. If she replaced a creature, we can play a spell for free. But first, we do get to reanimate that gizmo. And because I think we can do that in either order. So we'll resolve the reanimation effect from Silver Zeta first, and then resolve the deploy effect from Stabilizing Sculptor, which lets us play a spell for free. And that spell will be Grave Pact. So we have to destroy one of our creatures in order to give a creature minus 10, minus 10. We're going to kill Drix before it gets to go around making gizmos and getting extra replacement bonuses. We also get the other deploy effect of Stabilizing Sculptor to return a creature to its printed attack and health. So we're going to take those dice off the Justicar, putting it back down to 9. Which fortunately, is just barely not lethal since we are at 12, although we'd still love to block it. I think it's going to be very, very hard or impossible for Cersei to win. I think we've got this in the bag. We just have to play it out. Maybe play something dangerous to make them think they're under a certain kind of pressure when actually they're in a different kind of pressure. But sure, let's play this uh, Steadfast Mystic as a 710 at level 2, and we can give plus 4 attack and mobility 2 to a creature, so that'll be the Justicar putting it back up to 13, so it is lethal again. And our opponent's going to have to worry about that mobility 2, because we can jump it over to either of these two lanes. So they have to block all three lanes to prevent it. Which unfortunately is not going to be possible. We can only block two of those three lanes. So we're going to play Palladium Hindermind. The plague of a creature three armor this turn. We may move it to another lane if we have another mage. So move the sculptor to here. Give it three armor because it is a mage, fortunately, and the Hindermind can go here or here. Doesn't really matter because mobility two is going to let that Justicar go wherever it would like. And now actually that this is freed up, they can just go there. So that play doesn't even help. They had needed to not only block this, but also the other three lanes. So yeah. Um, and just to rub salt in the wound, add insert to injury. In addition to moving over back where the sculptor just was, we're going to go ahead and play Rhymehorn Charger, which is aggressive. So even though Korok is the non-forged player, it's going to go into the front. The deploy ability is not going to come into play. But it doesn't need to because that is six attack. And you know what? We can also use Whirlwind, which lets us move a creature to any lane and give it six more attack. So you know what? Let's play the Horam Horn Charger here and then uh, then use Whirlwind to move it to here with 12 attack and deal 25 damage, putting Steel Rosetta down to negative 13. Korok does take 13 in Retribution and go down to 14, but that is the end of the game and the end of the quarterfinals. So if you missed any of the games so far, go back and check them out and stay tuned for the next video where we'll go back to the first two quarterfinals winners and they will face off in the semifinals in the non-blue bracket and then we'll have the blue bracket semifinals and of course the finals after that. So thanks for watching. Subscribe so we can get more subscribers and bye.